Building a model steam plant using two engines, part four, the piping begins. In the centre of the steam chest on the Cyclops engine, there is this steam flange, and it's held on there using two 10BA bolts, which are very small and very fiddly. I'm assuming that they are 10BA bolts, they could be metric, either way they are very small. So I start to remove the flange and then I thought to myself, hang on a minute, there's a much better way of doing this. I was originally going to remove the flange and silver solder 5 30 seconds of an inch diameter copper pipe into it. But instead, by hand I'm using a tailstock die holder with a quarter by 40 threads per inch tap fitted to cut a thread on the external part of the flange. And here is the end result. I was able to cut sufficient threads on this flange to accept a PM Research right hand elbow. These excellent cast elbows are from the USA, and as standard they come threaded quarter by 40, but I'm told by a few viewers that quarter by 40 in the American standard has a different pitch to quarter by 40 in the British standard. So as I showed in a previous video, I just re-thread them with a quarter by 40 tap from my box of quarter by 40 taps. And here's what it looks like. This is a highly magnified image and the brass looks very shiny because I've cleaned it up on my polishing spindle. But eventually it will settle back to the same colour as a steam chest. I'm just about to silver solder these parts together which will connect the steam turret to the Cyclops engine steam inlet. I'm not showing the silver soldering operation, I've shown that many times in my videos. So if you're not sure how to silver solder, have a look at silver soldering for beginners. That's another video on this channel by the way, and if you follow those directions, the piping will end up looking like this. This is a main steam pipe from the turret to the engine, so it's going to get very hot and it's going to be wrapped in string, so there's no point in going to town polishing it. The only parts that are polished up were the brass parts at the end of the steam unions. So how did I know how long this pipe was going to be and how did I make it and how did I bend it? Three questions. Well I didn't bother measuring anything with a ruler. I did everything by eye. First of all I bent the pipe between my fingers very carefully so as not to kink the pipe. And once I had the correct distance between the bends all I had to do was cut the pipe to length and silver solder the unions on the end of it. And of course not forgetting to put the nuts on first. Believe me, I still forget to put the nuts on pieces of pipe after all these years, but not in this case, the nuts are on the pipe. With the pipe firmly bolted onto the steam turret and the 90 degree elbow union, in this clip I've been making some fine adjustments just to make the pipe sit perfectly. Now comes the tricky part. The steam chest on the Vulcan beam engine is on the inside of the engine, and getting these small 10BA bolts off is difficult. These bolts were quite tight and the only way I could slacken them off was to use one of the incredibly cheap spanners that I bought from Blackgate's engineering a while back. When I bought these spanners and featured them in a video, a lot of the experts said, oh they're no good, you need chrome vanadium spanners. Well I've got loads of those, but owing to the close proximity of the bolt to the flange, it was impossible to untighten the bolts using those. And the best tool to use was the very cheap spanner that I bought as part of a set from Blackgate's engineering because it has the open end at 90 degrees to the shaft. Despite having quite a good selection of miniature tools, including a nut spinner that I turned down to fit in inaccessible places, it was very difficult. But once the bolts were slackened off with the wonderful cheap Blackgate spanner, I used a very cheap nut spinner that never seems to fit any of the nuts and bolts. And finally, I removed the top bolt using a small pair of surgical forceps. Taking out the lower bolt was even worse, this was very inaccessible, but by using my trusty right angled Blackgate spanner first, followed by this nut spinner which doesn't fit the bolt, I got the bottom bolt out as well. What is really annoying is that I shouldn't have had to do this. The original pipe, the one that I'm just removing, was bent at the correct angle and it stuck out of the side of the engine at the correct angle, but the steam union on the other end of it wasn't soldered in place. Unbelievably the union was just a push fit, probably with a bit of Loctite on it, on the end of the pipe. First of all I unsoldered the flange from the original pipe, and then I resoldered the flange and a commercial steam union onto another piece of 5 30 seconds pipe. So it's silver soldered at both ends now. This short piece of pipe, which is basically inside the area of the engine, I'm not going to cover in string. Instead this is going to be polished. In this clip I'm fitting a double union because what I'm going to do is connect the steam pipe from the turret directly to this part of the engine. And I refer to this as being part of the engine because from my point of view with the difficulty of removing the flange from the steam chest it's going to remain as part of the engine. 
So now to connect and disconnect from the turret, it's just a simple undoing of the union halfway down the pipe. In this clip I'm applying some Loctite 542 to the flange. There aren't any gaskets on this engine and I don't want it to leak and have to come off again. Loctite 542, which is a hydraulic sealant, usually works well in this application. Provided both of the mating surfaces are flat, there shouldn't be a problem. The next step was to bend a piece of 5 32nds of an inch diameter copper pipe to go from this point to the steam turret. When I finally tighten up this union, I'll use a spanner on the centre part and another spanner on the nut. The other end just goes to the steam turret as you can see here. Running copper pipe lengths is pretty much like running electrical cables, they need to be neat, and I always sit and think about the positioning of the pipe runs before starting the job. This pipe, for instance, is the main steam feed to the turret from the boiler and I need this to look sympathetic to the piping that goes from the displacement lubricator to the engine. It's no good just connecting the parts from point A to point B and just hoping that's going to be it. Piping needs to look good. It's a very visible part of the steam plant and often it's possibly the first thing that you see even before the steam engines. So my tip to any viewers is sit and think about this for a while and figure out the best way to put the piping in place so that it looks good. Now you can see what I mean. Both of these lengths of pipe are going to be covered in string, so I left a suitable gap between the piping to accommodate the thickness of the string. Once these steam pipes have been lagged, they will touch each other, which is no big problem, it's just a cosmetic thing. If these were steam exhaust pipes or water pipes in such close proximity to each other, they could be clamped together with brass bands, but it won't look good on steam piping which is wrapped in string. After re-threading yet another PM Research elbow, I'm fitting a union in place because this is going to be the main outlet for the water from the water tank. After applying some Loctite 542, I can now tighten the elbow into position and I'm using a Barco adjustable spanner on the elbow as usual and you will notice on this clip I'm also using a normal spanner for the union that tightens into the tank itself. Just like the steam piping, this water pipe also needs to look good. Once again, I'm bending this freehand. I generally do that with small bore piping. For sizes of copper pipe above 3 sixteenths of an inch, I would normally use my small pipe bender. For much larger copper piping, there are several tricks available for bending it successfully without a pipe bender. One of them is to fill it with water with a bit of washing up liquid for lubrication and freeze it. Then as you bend the pipe, the ice stops the pipe from kinking. Or you could buy some commercially available pipe bending springs that can be fitted inside the pipe so that the pipe doesn't kink when it's been bent. I think these springs could be difficult to remove on complex bends. Other methods include filling the pipe with sand or filling the pipe with molten lead. And then you bend the pipe and once the pipe's bent how you want it, you simply heat the pipe with a blowtorch, the lead melts and it runs out. I don't think this is a very smart idea if you're bending a piece of copper pipe to carry water for human consumption, but it works perfectly when bending larger bore copper piping for steam engines. But none of these methods are applicable to small bore piping like I'm using here. Unless of course it's very thin walled copper piping which is not recommended for steam applications. Here's an aerial view of the plant and you can see the principle. The piping's looking quite neat. The piping run that I've just made from the water tank to the boiler feed hand pump follows the contour of the baseboards almost perfectly. And so now you can get an impression of what the plant's going to look like. It needs this copper piping to be in place. And my advice to beginners is sit and think for quite a while before starting the piping job, then you will get it right first time. And that's about it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.